Hey everyone, so building on what we looked at in the last video, I demonstrated how if you're using SQL to either create a new record in a table or update a record that's in a table, that you don't just have to update with a constant, you can actually use a value calculated from a function. For simplicity's sake, I simply use the date function because that's a predefined function and because it's readily easy to demonstrate if it is correct. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a module and in that module, we're going to have a custom function. And then I'm going to show you how to call that custom function in order to put a value into a record and how to dynamically generate the name of a table. Now, whereas I said that you probably wouldn't use uh, SQL to add the date to a record, you would indeed use SQL to generate the name of a table. Why? Well, say you want to do a summary of the day's sales. So you could create a table called 0901 sales. Next day, 0902 sales. Next day, 0903 sales. That way you have a single, uh, you have a readily identifiable way of knowing which sales happened when because they're in that table. If they're not in that table, they didn't happen that day. And then what you could do is at say at the end of the week, all those tables are combined into a, a, a week ending sales. So sales for the week ending 0907, whatever the proper date is. And then you delete those individual daily tables or you at least archive them into a separate database. So they're not taking up space and impacting the production database. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's get into it. So first, a clarification concerning modules. There are two types of modules. We've already been working on one, and that's the one that is attached to the form. It's known as a class module. It's attached to a specific object and is only accessible to that object. We're going to create a standard module, which will have functions which will be accessible throughout the entire database. So let's click on Create. Let's click on Module, not Class Module. You can get rid of that at the top. And we enter public function and the name of what it's going to be. Let's call it table name parentheses as string. We have to say what kind of data it's going to store. And then again, table name without the parentheses this time. And we'll give it a value. Since we've been using our table right along, I'm going to use a different value. That way there aren't any concerns that somehow that name is lingering in the background somewhere. We'll give an entirely different name to what we're using. So September table in quotes. We save that. It asks for a name. We'll call this R mod. Now, as before, we need a little bit of Visual Basic. So, docmd dot run SQL. The entire SQL coding has to be in quotes. And then we write create table. And now, rather than having the constant, this is where we have to address that function. So you start off with the character that's on the tilde key. It's to the left of the number one may look like an apostrophe, but it's not. So that symbol, my apologies for not knowing the name of it. And then the quotes, and then the plus, and then the name of that variable we just created, it's table name. So table name, and then you just reverse this, plus quotes, and again, that symbol. And then now I'm gonna paste in the rest since we've already reviewed this this whole section is uh, within parentheses, and this is where you're defining the field name plus the data type separated by a comma. Okay, so we save that. Go back to our form, and then we run it. There enough, sure enough I should say, the table now has rather than a constant it has a function now you could say well it will always use the same value 
this is just the first stage. It's an iterative process. So I wanted to demonstrate that rather than embedding the value right there in the SQL coding, you can reach out to a function and that would then indeed, um, that function would then generate a value and send it back to the code, to the SQL code. So now that we've done that, now we will add on to this, we'll build on to this so it truly is a variable. So what we do is we go back to our mod and what we do is rather than September table, let's get, uh, we'll, we'll just put a posture there for now. We might want it again. So table name equals format date, capital D, sorry. So format date and then the format between quotes so let's do, I guess, month, month, day, day, year, year, close quotes, close parenthesis. Save that. Back to our form. We can leave that for the moment because it's not going to be the same name. Now, if you noticed, we didn't change the class module because the class module is still going out to the same function, we changed the value within that function. And there you go. So now you have truly taken a variable and used it for the name of a table. So if I was doing this on 9.2, it'd say 9.2. If I do this on 9.3, it'd be 9.3. Again, one of the reasons why you do this is maybe you're in a large financial institution or a large retailer, someone, some organization that really needs to identify the date a transaction occurred. Maybe they do reporting and things like that. So you would create a table at the end of the day for all the transactions stored for uh, that were occurred on 9-1. Next day, this would generate a table for 9-2. Next day, it would generate a table for 9-3. So without changing any code, this will keep changing based on the date. And then maybe at the end of the week, you take all the values from those tables, put it into a week table, so first week of September, and then you delete or archive the individual day tables, get them out of the main production database. That way they're not taking up space and slowing down the um, – it's not taking up resources and slowing, slowing down the database. So we went from a static to a variable. And now we can kind of combine the two. So what we're going to do now is this we're going to add to. So we have, let's put a plus sign after this, quote, sales. That way the name of the table is a little bit more explanatory. Again, we don't have to change the class module because the class module is going out to the standard module and that's where we're making the change. So technically we're going to have to delete this because the name is going to be different now. So run it and there you go. So again, this would be for if you're trying to track a specific day's activities, whether it's sales, could be whatever. And then, like I said, you could then take those individual tables and combine them into a week's table. Now that we've done that, let's do something similar, but for a value within a field. So it's very similar, but I just want to demonstrate that to kind of dot our I's and cross our T's. So what we're going to do there is we're going to create another function. So public function, and we could call this current user name as string. And by the way, just in case I didn't clarify that, if you notice, we said it was string, and yet we incorporated a date. So we basically had to convert a date format to a string. That's why we'll use the format. Now, 
we want to have a current name. So current user name. And this case, we're going to use a constant just like we did for September table. Uh, but what you could do is you could uh, modify this function so maybe it captures the current logged in user or maybe you have the logged in because you can capture the name of who's logged into the computer itself some organizations do that that your login to your computer to the network is the login to everything but that's a separate tutorial so for now we'll just put a constant in here but i've already demonstrated how you can build a function of your own this is again just demonstrating that you don't have to use a constant baked in to the baked into the class module that the class module can go out to another module and get a value there. Now this one I'm just going to paste in in its entirety since we've already gone through the details, but I will point out a few differences. So again, it starts off with Visual Basic, do command dot run SQL quotes. So insert into table, and we just need to change that because that was from a test I was running. So sorry about that. So table name. So if you notice, this is matching this. So that way, whatever value is here will be here as well. So again, you don't have to revert back to a constant or a string. You are reverting, you, you are referring back out to that module. That module is going to be the source. And the only major difference here is if you notice, this works a lot like when I put in the date function, just the name of the function and then the parentheses. So whereas with this function, you don't use the parentheses, with this function, you do. So uh, you can pause the video, I can leave it here for a few seconds, but hopefully that's self-explanatory that this stays the same and this follows the pattern of using the function name. So we're going to remark that out because we don't want it to create another table. But now that the table has been created, we should be able to run this. And it should insert it into this one. So. Just to prove it, we'll delete the other ones because if it's not there, we would get an error. Okay, so we'll go there and there you go. And just to prove that's working, that was the name that we chose. That was the value we chose. So there you go. So in my previous video, I said I really didn't want to go through making modules, but I, I realized that just showing you date really doesn't help. It introduces the idea that you can use a function, but I realized you probably wanted to actually see the function spelled out. So now you can dynamically put in values for records, for fields and a record in a table, and you can dynamically name a table. And I just use date because the example that I'm using is maybe retail or banking, financial institutions, some kind of organization where you really have so many transactions that you want to be able to break it down into its own table, even just temporarily. So I think that should do it for this video. I'm trying to keep these videos to under 20 minutes each. I don't know if I succeeded because I had to splice this one a few times, but hopefully that was helpful. And uh, if there's anything else that you want to see, just leave a comment and tell me what you like to see. But as I mentioned in the last video, uh, pretty soon it's going to get challenging because as the statements become more complex, it's going to be more effort for you to fit it into your database because basically you have to start swapping out more and more values and put in the, the, you know, the field names and the table names. So again, I'm trying to keep this simple enough so that you have basically this template and then you can apply it to what you're doing. So again, I hope this has been helpful and have a good day.